Right then, welcome back to the channel. Another preview. This time it's England versus America. I know there's going to be all sorts of memes from 1776 and all that sort of stuff getting flung around because the Americans have basically got nothing else about them, have they? So this is going to be a real interesting one, uh, I think, on that front. Uh, but I think it could be a very tactically interesting game as well. America, then, let's talk about them. Um, they missed the last World Cup after failing to qualify. They're going to be keen to recover from that embarrassment um, because football's on a good trajectory in America. MLS is starting to create its own culture. Um, the teams are starting to get like a real and genuine following. The league actually looks well run and doesn't look like the sort of sideshow pony affair that it was maybe certainly in the 90s, but even in the 2000s, it was a little bit of a piss-take league, whereas it's very serious now with some serious talent coming through, some serious teams, some serious games, and actually their own culture, which is what I think is the most important thing. And I think a lot of it originally was started to be copied from European culture, but I think the South American and Latin American culture in America is hugely influencing a lot of how football is watched, supported, followed, um, and how the terraces are. So I think there's, there's a real good energy and culture developing in America uh, around the MLS and it's no longer the sort of piss take joke second hand league that it was. I, I think LA, especially as a city or LAFC and LA galaxy, th that's real football stuff where they've got a team, uh, two teams in one city. That's, that's something that I thought American sports culture generally lads. I know that the, you know, New York has got a handful of teams and there's, there's Los Angeles has got a handful of teams in some of the other sports, by and large, that's not a thing that exists in American culture, in football culture in America anyway. They have a good group of players. It's a small group, but they've got some good players. Tyler Adams, uh, Christian Pulisic, uh, you know, um, Weston McKenney. These are good technical footballers. Um, nothing special, but certainly wouldn't be looking over them. You know, we're not talking world-class or world beaters here, but you know, good players. It is the 11th appearance of the United States at a World Cup. Uh, the best they've ever done was coming third in the first ever World Cup in 1930, but they did reach the quarters in Japan, South Korea, all the way back in 2002. And I think if USA can repeat that, that would be monumental for them going into the next World Cup, which obviously, of course, is going to be in the United States. I think a lot of England fans will be looking down at their noses because of the stereotypes of soccer and, and all that lot in America. But that would be a mistake. Um, they are coming off a one-all draw with Wales, which I think they're probably not too happy about, to be honest. I think Wales was expected to probably be the whipping boys of this group. So USA know they need to pick up three points to have a chance at going through this. Um, and they can get through this. I think Wales, Iran, America, all of them should feel confident about getting out of this group. It's just which team's going to turn up against the others to be able to do this. This video is sponsored by the folks at Circle, and you might be wondering what Circle is uh, and how can we have fun with it? Well, Circle is an all-new sweepstakes game that is taking the football community by storm, and it's a very simple game to play. The winner is determined based on what happens in the live games, and Circle moves constantly depending upon the actions within the game, whether that's corners, shots on target, yellow cards. And the leader is always highlighted in the app at the top in the circle. And here's the good part. When a goal is scored, 20% of the pot is paid to the leader at that moment. It's pretty unique. I've not really seen anything out there, anything like this. If you click on the link below, Join the Housen Circle. You can play along with me as England face off USA in the second group game. And you can even set up your own circle with a couple of mates, you know, five to ten. You can test your football analysis skills. This is where it gets interesting. And you can set up your own circle rules. You can have buy-ins. You can have worst-case scenarios. You can have one of your weights, mates wins some money. You can have uh, all sorts of stuff going in there. It's interesting. Another bonus, stake five to get five means if you use our referral code on sign up, Housen, H-O-W-S-O-N, and then deposit and stake five pound on your first circle, you will get a five pound free bet. Remember, be gamble aware, make sure you're 18 plus and reside in the UK to play. Click the link below, uh, join my circle, and let's see if we can come out on top, hey lads? So how do USA play? They've been very, very fond of the 4-3-3 formation and they've started the majority of games in that way. And they play probably their best football 
um, is high tempo, vertical, transitional kind of game that really emphasizes the strengths in midfield and on the wings. And to be honest, the athleticism that the American team does possess. They have quite a slow and patient passing style, deliberate kind of passing style. And they, they are a bit of a pass it in the net kind of team. And they have one of the lowest average shooting distances of any team that's in the World Cup. Players like McKenney, uh, Musa, Pulisic, Aronson, Reyna, uh, and Tim Weir, they can actually press opponents, uh, turn them over, and get up the field pretty quickly with a counter-attack. They also have one of the highest aerial dual percentages won and ball recoveries per 90 in the World Cup too. They sometimes flip it and go 4-4-2. Sometimes that'll look like a 4-2-3-1. And uh, most teams do that when transitioning to an attack. But it does show that they really try and get the most out of the wingers. And the wingers is going to be the emphasis in this game. The forwards are very quick and very tricky. And I think that could cause England some problems. What we saw against Iran was Iran basically had a couple of attacks, scored a couple of goals. The fullbacks are heavily involved in the build-up play for England. And to be honest, both fullbacks favor attacking if i'm usa i'm looking at that area of the pitch especially considering that the the center half area was a weakness and now it's definitely a weakness even more so if it's going to be dire that plays there i i think that that is the area that usa will want to try and focus to beat england predicts with 11 uh turner robinson zimmerman Green. dest mckenny adams musa pulisic weyer and Ferreira and the star man I think it'll be Pulisic he's the captain he's probably their best player and there's no questions about his status within um, the USA side I've seen him referred to as the LeBron James of soccer I think that's probably way wider the mark on every level but maybe within the US team alone that sort of stands up to scrutiny he's got five goals in seven games for the uh, for the USA in World Cup qualifying he is their top scorer and he has been having a pretty poor season with Chelsea but Chelsea have been having a pretty poor season so I'm not going to blame that entirely on him he's only got one goal one assist in 13 league games between uh, 2019 and 2021 though uh, he did average 2.75 dribbles completed per 90 which put him in the top 20 in the Premier League. He's only played five full 90s this season, uh, but he still has 19 shot creating chances. So he's going to be someone that they look to go through to create. And he does like to track back, um, win the ball for his team. Uh, and that's only going to be heightened because the whole USA team sort of thrives off that sort of stuff as well. And him and Ferreira are going to be a problem, I think, on the wings. Um, if they catch us on the counter, Pulisic is probably going to be right at the heart of that, I would thought. For England, starting 11-wise, I think Pickford, Trippier and Shaw. I think it'll be Stones and I think he'll go with Dyer at centre-half. Midfield, I think this is the best bit England have got, and that's Bellingham, Rice uh, and Mount. I don't think he'll change any of that, I think, because it was so good in the last game. And I think it'll be Saka, Sterling and Rashford. Now, personally, I'd go with Rashford and Wilson, and I would look to try and get in behind America and have the aerial threat of Wilson. But I think he loves Sterling for whatever reason. Um, and I think Sterling will play. And for that reason, it'll be Saka, Rashford and Sterling. It could be Callum Wilson down the middle, though. I wouldn't be shocked at either of those things. But I think Marcus Rashford will be given the nod. And I think that makes him uh, the biggest threat for England. And with Harry Kane being an injury doubt... It could be Rashford that they turn to to start up top. And USA will play a defensive style of play. Um, they will try and keep it compact, a little bit like what Iran tried to do. They'll look for the counter attack, um, and they definitely have more attack going, uh, more attacking quality than uh, than Iran had. The USA defense is the worst part of that team, so they're going to try and protect that. Um, they have creative, dynamic, direct players, um, and I think. The flip side of that is they're vulnerable to pacey direct players like Rashford if they creep up too high. Because they're a team that likes to build up slowly, one of the things that happens when a team builds up slowly is they'll creep up. And a slow build-up allows the opposition to drop back. And when the opposition drops back, that forces the, the other team's defense to push up high. And then that leaves space in behind. So it 
their slow build up will be a problem for themselves because they're going to want to, for me, they're going to want to attack quickly and transition quickly. And then when they lose the ball, they would be in a decent position. But if they're so slow in their build up, they're going to find themselves in England's half. And that's when England can counter attack them, uh, especially if you've got if Saka, Sterling, and Rashford is an absolute threat. So if England can draw the USA team to the halfway line, they will smash them. Um, it's an unstable back line and Rashford running at them with the confidence he's playing with now could cause some problems. Um, the two centre-halves are absolutely mega slow. Them two going to the halfway line should just be alarm bells right away across the USA bench. Um, and that's how you beat them. One, exploit the defence. Uh, two, stop their quick counters because I expect England have the lion's share, pun intended, of possession. I expect them to be living in the USA half that's when you've got to look out for the counters because, I mean, you saw it with Lionel Messi losing the ball in the middle of the pitch, went on to lead to a goal for Saudi Arabia. That's the sort of thing that happens in a World Cup and you don't need much. Getting one win under the belt for England is good, but you don't need much to find yourself looking up at a couple of teams above you in a group. The groups are so small, the margin for errors are so small that if you balls it up, you're in trouble and, and Trippier and Shaw will be so high, so involved in the build-up play that I think it could be potentially dangerous for them to find themselves on a turnover, not aware, because USA will have the, the pace uh, and the tenacity to get in behind, and that could be a massive problem. But that's it. That's my preview for USA versus England. Uh, make sure to check out Circle. It'd be good to see how some of you guys are getting in. Here's a new app. If you want to go check it out, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.